A long time ago, in a faraway land, there were two kingdoms. These kingdoms were very similar in many ways, but were different in some regards. Like other kingdoms, these kingdoms had kings who were both wise and just. But one day a disagreement arose between these two men, which almost led to their end. The kingdom to the east was called the Crown Kingdom. The crown was their symbol, and they loved the color blue. This kingdom was well known for their fine craftsmanship of swords, thick shields, and exquisite belts. They took great pride in their art, and considered these items to be the most important in a conflict. On the other hand, to the west of Crown Kingdom was the Lion Kingdom. Their symbol was the lion, and they preferred red to blue. Rather than focusing on swords, shields, and belts, this kingdom claimed their work was most necessary, for they made great helmets, strong breastplates, and firm boots to protect them in battle. Because of this disagreement over which things were most needed, these kingdoms decided to end trade with each other. While they thought it was a good idea, they soon regretted that decision, for now their knights did not have all that was needed to help them protect themselves. But they didn't want to admit they were wrong, so they didn't do anything to restore their trade. Until... A mighty dragon who lived between the two kingdoms became very angry. The creature had lived peaceably in its caves for a long time. It didn't eat their flocks and left their crops alone. But for some reason, the dragon began to cause a great fright. Its stomping shook the ground during the day, and its roars echoed across the land all night. Then one day, it lit up the sky with its terrifying gust of fire. The two kingdoms decided that something had to be done. But because of their disagreement, their knights didn't have all that was needed to approach the great creature. Yet even with this issue, they still did not want to admit that they needed each other to solve their problem. Day after day and night after night, they still did not want to admit they were wrong. But all hope was not lost. A stranger came to the kingdoms one day. He claimed he needed a full suit of armor for his wife for the church. Both kings claimed they could help him, but only if he would choose which of them crafted the most important parts of the armor he required. To their surprise, he told them that they were all just as important. Without each of the pieces, a knight cannot do what is needed of him. If there were a sword and a shield but no armor, how would the knight be protected when his guard was not up? And if there were armor but no weapons, how would the knight fight and conquer his foes? But because the two kings were still too prideful to let the other use their portion of the armor, they still couldn't solve the issue of the dragon. The knights of the kingdoms also had no idea what they were to do to appease the creature's wrath, even if they could approach it. Once again, to their surprise, the stranger declared that if they supplied him with the equipment, he would solve the problem himself. I've dealt with everything from angry people to angry bees, he said. How different could this be? Without having any better ideas and not wanting to side with each other to solve the problem, the two kings agreed. When the man got to the dragon's cave, the beast was in a terrible fit of anger. The dragon took one look at the stranger and blew a great flurry of fire in his direction. Fortunately, the man was quick to hold up his shield, and what the shield could not cover, his armor made up for. With the aid of this protection, the billowing flames had no effect upon him. When the dragon was finally out of breath, the stranger noticed something lodged between its teeth. To the creature's amazement, the man formally introduced himself and said that he could cause the pain in his mouth to cease. While unwilling to comply at first, the dragon decided to trust the man, once he understood he was from the church. With the aid of his borrowed horse, the man secured the dragon's head. The creature quivered as the man drew his sword and proceeded to pick at the element in its mouth. The source of the terrible pain was removed and the dragon gave a slow groan of satisfaction. When the man returned to the kings, they were overjoyed to hear that the creature's suffering had ended. They also finally understood that viewing some pieces as inferior was foolish. A knight needs all of the armor if he is to be as effective and protected as he can be. With that, the stranger was rewarded. The kingdoms began to trade again and the dragon caused no more sleepless nights. And they all lived happily ever after. Especially when the pastor's wife found out that the people would be praying for Vacation Bible School.